Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. A viewer has asked me a question, and I find it rather interesting because uh, I have heard this uh, topic brought up, or seen this topic brought up, many times and never really received a definitive answer. Suppose that you feed an antenna, a wire antenna, at the center with very low loss open wire line, uh, such as ladder line spaced six inches apart, uh, number 12 gauge wire, as low loss as you can possibly get it, so the SWR is of no concern, essentially, no matter how high it gets, as long as the line doesn't get too long. This is for the HF bands, and also for 160 meters it would apply. But in particular, 160, 80, 60, and possibly 40 meters, where sometimes you have to make an antenna shorter, a dipole antenna shorter, than one half wavelength uh, long. Uh, the general rule in my uh, investigations is that an overall length end to end of a center fed dipole antenna fed with open wire line or low loss transmission line is about one fourth wavelength, that is one eighth wavelength on each side. It's important that it be fed at the center and that the line come away from the antenna at a right angle for at least a quarter of a wavelength and preferably more, just as would apply with any open wire fed, uh, center fed antenna. You can, however, make an antenna even shorter than a quarter of a wavelength end to end and feed it with open wire line. But the problem with this practice is that the radiation resistance drops rapidly as you go shorter than one quarter of a wavelength end to end. And that will increase the standing wave ratio very rapidly, but more important, it will also increase the loss uh, in the antenna because whatever the loss resistance is it's a fixed value you can't change that really you can only try to get it as low as possible by using a uh, low loss feed line large gauge antenna wire and get the antenna up as high as you can above the surface of the earth but when the radiation resistance decreases to only a small fraction of the loss resistance, you're going to have a lot of loss no matter how trite scan is off, no matter how you slice it, no matter how you cut it. So, uh, and I would not recommend the use of loading coils with open wire fed antennas. Uh, it's just not a good idea because it can, uh, you really don't know what you're getting and it isn't going to do anything for the for the lost resistance. If anything, it's going to raise the lost resistance. But if you've only got room for, say, uh, two-tenths of a wavelength from end to end for your 160-meter dipole, or even uh, maybe even an eighth of a wavelength, 0.125 or 12.5%, uh, of a wavelength from end to end. Even if you've only got room for that, uh, putting up a center-fed dipole that long uh, is better than not putting up anything at all. And if all the room as you have is that much room, chances are that's, that's the best antenna for your uh, use, especially if you can get it up quite high. So the answer is I would recommend don't make it any shorter than one quarter of a wavelength from end to end. But if you have to, you can get away with it and you will still make contacts. And you might in fact be 
quite surprised at how effective such an antenna can be because it doesn't take much power to get the signal where you want it to go. Uh, you'd be su very surprised. Hmm. So go for it, say I. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Proprietor and operator of W1GV saying 73. And no matter how long a center fed dipole might happen to be, at the end of a QSO, I will say so long in CW. Translating to da 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 da. -da.